So let's take a look at the NIRU. The NIRU is the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. So it is the unemployment rate at which inflation is not accelerating, nor slowing down. Recall our basic equations for the price setting and the wage setting, which we plot as a function of the unemployment rate to find the equilibrium level of unemployment. Remember, we said that prices equal the expected level of prices, and that's how we got the natural employment rate by equating the wage setting and the price setting. But let's prove that this only happens if and only if we are at an equilibrium in the labor market. So we substitute the wage setting into the price setting. Remember, we had here wages, and we know that in the equilibrium of the labor market, A over 1 plus the markup is equal to this function. Recall that we are right here, when wage setting is equal to price setting. So this function here is interchangeable with this expression here. So now we just substitute, and we realize that things cancel out, and we are left with prices equal to the expected level of prices. And this is only true because we said that we are at an equilibrium point in which the price setting is equal to the wage setting. So this is proved. Now let's take in a specific wage setting function and plug it into the price setting. We take into account time by adding the subscript t, meaning for example that this is a price at period t. We divide both sides of the equation by price of t minus 1, and we use this trick. Here we're not changing anything. We're adding p at t minus 1 minus p at t minus 1, so this would really cancel out and be 0. But we'll leave it there and you'll see why. We do the exact same thing here. We're just adding 0. Now we just have to split both terms and we get this. And we realize that this is just 1 plus, and this is the change in prices from period t minus 1 to period t. But this is exactly the definition of inflation at time t, for which we use a symbol pi t. So 1 plus the inflation rate at t equals all this times, we do the same thing here, this is just, uh, this is 1 plus the expected change in the price level, which is just 1 plus the expected inflation at t. Now we can take this, dividing over there, and this multiplying over there, and we get this. We take that, dividing here, which is just multiplying this, and we are right to this. And we know that whenever the inflation is low, the expected inflation is low, and the markup is low, and that's usually the case, this is probably 2%, and this is not really high in a competitive economy. So if these three elements are low, there are numbers like 0, 0.0 something, then this will be a good approximation of this expression right here. We just take this plus this, minus this, minus this. We take this A, divide them to the other side, and we take this, this and this, there, afterwards. So we're left with this expression right here for the inflation at time t. We split this into 2, 1 over a times 1 plus c, and the rest, and for simplicity we normalize a to 1. So we are left with this expression right here, in which inflation at time t depends on the expected inflation at time t and the unemployment rate at period t.